In this video, we'll be looking at the absorption of digested food. Let's get right to it. Before we go to absorption, first we must understand that digestion has already occurred. The point of digestion is to break down complex molecules into simple molecules that are tiny enough to pass through the plasma membrane to be absorbed into our body. So now we're going to look at the site of absorption. The site of absorption of food in our body is the ileum. The ileum is the final portion of the small intestine. And let's look at the adaptations of the ileum to help it absorb food efficiently, or rather at this stage, nutrients. The food has become nutrients that are easy to absorb. And so first of all, this is an example of a cross-section of an ileum. So within the ileum, the ileum wall itself is very folded. The inner layer is constantly folded. It's, it exists in many folds. And above those folds, on those folds, we have many tiny projections coming out like this. So in biology, whenever we have folds and projections coming out, there's only one purpose to it. And by the way, these are called villus. In plural, it is villi. So it has my, many tiny projections called villi. Now, whenever we have folds and projections coming out in biology, the purpose is always the same. That is to increase the total surface area exposed. And why would we want to do that in this case? We have to remember that all the food, all the nutrients that are digested is inside the ileum here in the lumen. So what we want to do is we want to increase the surface. It is going to be absorbed through the surface. And so we increase the surface area so that there's more room for nutrients to pass through. And so this increases the efficiency of absorption of nutrients. Now there's another adaptation of the villus itself. So now we zoom in into a single villus. And this is how it looks like. So as usual, the outer covering, the outer covering of any uh, a part of the body is the epithelial layer. And so we have epithelial cells. And these epithelial cells, you can only see there is one layer of epithelial cell. So once again, the purpose of this is to ensure that the crossing over of the nutrients happens as efficiently as possible. And so we have an epithelial layer that's only one cell thick. And it accelerates nutrient absorption because it shortens the distance of the nutrients, the nutrients need to travel to pass through. And so it helps with absorption. Then we will also realize that we have a goblet cell. Uh, it's not in this picture, but in between all these epithelial cells, within the epithelial cells itself, we have some goblet cells. And the function of the goblet cell is to secrete mucus. This mucus actually helps with the digestion of food. So it helps with the breakdown of food and the moving around of food and the nutrients to move it around within the ileum itself. It makes it smooth. And then we have the network of blood capillaries. As you can see here, this one that goes from blue to red. So this network of blood capillaries, where are the nutrients all going to go? The nutrients are currently in the lumen of the small intestine, of the ileum, here, right here. All the nutrients are here. So when we say absorb into our body, absorb into where? The final place the nutrient re needs to reach is every single cell in our body. Every single cell in our body from our head to our toe requires these nutrients to function normally. But now you must remember the position that we are in. This ileum is in the, in, the, uh, in the area of the abdomen. So how is the nutrient from the abdomen going to go to the cells on the top of my head and the cells at the bottom of my feet? So therefore, we need some sort of transportation network. This is where the blood circulatory system comes in. And so first, the nutrient must enter the blood. From the blood, it is distributed to all parts of the body. And so that is the importance of the network of blood capillaries here. So the blood capillaries, their function is to help transport nutrients to the whole body. 
Now, blood will only dissolve water soluble substances because the plasma is made mostly of water anyway. So, what about lipid soluble substances? Lipid soluble substances have a different route to be absorbed first, which is then later on transferred into the blood as well. So, the lipid soluble substances enter this structure inside. You can see the green color structure inside. Of course, it's not really green color, this is just to distinguish between the features. So inside you can see there is a green color sort of uh, another sort of tube inside. So this is called lacteal. So the lacteal function is similar in the network of blood capillaries but it helps to transport fatty acids and glycerol droplets. And whatever dissolves inside it which later we will see is vitamin A, D, E and K. And then finally on each of these epithelial cells Remember, villus itself is a projection, but within, on top of each of these epithelial cells itself, when we zoom it in, these epithelial cells themselves have tiny projections coming out. And so it's just like a microvillus, and that's exactly what it's called. It's the microvillus. So once again, what is the function of the microvillus? The same as just now, whenever we have any projections, in, uh, in biology, the function is to increase the surface area for absorption, to expose more places for things to pass through. And this is the adaptation of the villus. Now let's go into the actual absorption itself. So how is food absorbed through the ileum? Now we have, I've grouped them here, we have fructose, glucose, galactose, amino acid, water, vitamin B and vitamin C. All of these are absorbed through the epithelial cell into the blood capillaries because these are water soluble. And so what happens is, remember this space out here is actually the lumen of the ileum here, right here. This is the space where all the nutrients are after digestion. And so what must happen is these nutrients must go to the blood. That's the goal. So, how does this happen? So, all these nutrients that I listed out earlier will go through the epithelial cell. They have to pass through the epithelial cell. So, they have to diffuse into the epithelial cell because epithelial cell is the barrier. So, it has to diffuse into the epithelial cell. After diffusing into the epithelial cell, then it diffuses out into the blood, through the, into the network of blood capillaries. And so, this is what happens to all the water-soluble substances here. And you can see vitamin B and C here are water soluble vitamins. Now the method of absorption, so this one we must go back to transport across the plasma membrane. So we already understand that it is moving through the membrane of the cell. It is going through into the epithelial cell, so it has to pass through the plasma membrane once here at this point. Let me do this again. Okay, so it has to cross here at this point, plasma membrane. And then it also has to cross the plasma membrane here. And then even the blood capillaries are made up of cells. So once again, it has to pass through the plasma membrane another two times inside the blood capillary itself before it enters into the blood. So we can see this absorption process is actually the process of passing through the plasma membrane. And so what is the method for each of these following nutrients. For fructose, the method is facilitated diffusion. It is still down the concentration gradient. However, it needs a channel protein. And then for glucose and galactose, it is by active transport. This is because glucose and galactose concentration is higher in the blood than it is in the ileum. And then we have amino acid is by active transport as well for the same reasons. Water will just pass through by simple diffusion and that is through osmosis. And vitamin B and C will follow along with water. It is dissolved in water and so it just follows along. It tags along. It is absorbed together with water. Now fatty acids and glycerol are a different story. They do not enter the network of blood capillaries directly. They will enter into the blood later into the left subclavian wing. But that's another story. So what happens here is fatty acids and glycerol actually enter through the epithelial cell. But here something special happens. 
the fatty acid and glycerol will recombine into lipid first. So it becomes lipid first. And then from there, from the epithelial cells, so fatty acids and glycerol enter the epithelial cell, combine to become lipid, and then they go through into the lactate. So this process is only by simple diffusion. This process occurs by simple diffusion. Now vitamins A, D, E and K are they? They are fat soluble vitamins and therefore they will also go into the lacteal through the epithelial cell. So they will actually be dissolved in the fatty acid and glycerol. So in the, in, in the lipid. So this also is by simple diffusion. That's all for this lesson guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please help me hit the like button. Do subscribe because I'll be producing at least one video a week. I'll see you guys in the next video.